Thank you very much. So I guess I'm either the headliner or the guy who's standing between you and beer. So I'm going to try and make this reasonably quick. But I do want to do something interactive, right? This is a room full of investors. So can I just get a show of hands? Anyone own shares or real estate? Just stick your hand up really quickly. I hope that's everyone, right? Okay. How about metal? Anybody in the room holding metal, right? Okay. Now, of the few of you, put your hand down if that metal is silver or gold. So keep your hand up if you hold anything other than silver or gold? One guy. Uh, and you hold platinum, okay. So anyone holding copper, zinc, tin, lead? No, why not? These commodities are going through the roof. They're just very hard for ordinary people to trade. And that was actually the basic problem we tried to solve. So let me run through this really quickly. If I can get the next slide up. We're running on, uh, on PDF, so hopefully we can flick through these smoothly. Anyone, anyone? Bueller? All right. Um, while that's coming up, the thing I need to tell you is that the metals market globally is a $2.7 trillion market in physical trade. Now the derivatives on top of that are 60 to 80 times or more. Nobody actually quite knows how to measure them properly. It is a market full of hidden fees, of middlemen, of, uh, as the previous presenter said, gunk in the machine, and it is ripe for disruption. Uh, so, and, and as we saw, a room full of very savvy investors and other than precious metals, nobody actually holds metal in this room. So ordinary investors, forget about it as New Yorkers like to say. Let's move on. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. If we can, if not, I'm just going to keep talking. All right. So what we're trying to do is essentially create a global decentralized peer-to-peer -peer trading ecosystem that will allow anybody from institutions to individuals to trade any form of metal across the board. Now, you do have big incumbents like the London Metals Exchange, uh, like the SIBO, COMEX, but those guys really only trade refined metal. We're going to allow people to trade and to monetize and to fractionalize pre-production metals still in the ground to allow projects to get funding all the way through to transform metals like rods, bars, pipes, meshes, etc. We're going to allow you to tokenize it and trade it freely on an exchange. Let's move on, please. Okay. While that's changing over, I do want to say we're also interesting in the blockchain space from a regulatory point of view. We're going to be a listed company with all of the auditing, scrutiny, and, uh, and reporting requirements that that entails, very deliberately. Not because my ego needs to run a public company, believe me, I do not. But because of the scrutiny and the auditability that that provides. We are also going to, in the US, register our token through a full F1 or S1 process with the SEC. So we're not getting an exemption from regulation, we're going through the front door of the regulators. Again, for transparency and investability by institutions. Okay, so. I've already mentioned this, we can move past it, but it's a, a global, tokenized, distributed uh, exchange for all forms of metal. Next slide, please, guys. Well, I'm trying to run through this quickly. These people want their beer. And as an Australian, I know you don't stand between people and beer. All right. Um, it's go I'm going to describe, there are three phases. It's going to come up in a second. Our first stage will be the exchange where you'll be able to, to write derivatives on metals and, uh, and to put up contracts. There you go. I didn't even make it up. The second stage will be investment. So you'll be able to basically forward purchase metals from pre-production mines at a significant discount. Why a significant discount? Because you're taking a big risk for future delivery. The mine may or may not go into production, but if it does, then you should make a significant multiple of your investment. And the third stage, as I mentioned, is the marketplace where you'll be able to trade and buy any form of metal globally. There is currently no metals marketplace, so it's like the equivalent of Alibaba for metals products. Let's move on, please. So we're going to roll it out in stages. Um, I've already described this and I won't belabor it too much, but uh, so Kickstarter for metals is the, is the investables portion. Let's move on to the next part, please. Uh, I think we've got an example there of the Montalbian Victoria mine. This is a mine I've been raising money for for three and a half years and was actually one of the main genesis of this project. Does anybody know how hard it is to raise capital for an unlisted exploration stage mining company? Let me just put about seven really, really's in front of really, really, really hard. 
Okay, there is just no marketplace for it, and it's really tough to do. And that was the genesis of how we started this project. So I'm very grateful. This is an awesome mine, by the way. It should get great investment, but I'm not here to spruik it tonight. So let's move on to the next slide. But it's just an example of a really good project that should be funded, that is having trouble getting funding, and that's one of the things we're going to solve. Okay, next slide, please, guys. Uh, the metals marketplace, as I mentioned, um, this is trillions and trillions of dollars, but it's localized. It's fractionalized, and there's no Alibaba for metals trading, and so we're going to build it. But as I mentioned, we're not just going to build it in the old-fashioned e-commerce way. We're going to build it in a way that every transaction is tokenized in a contract that can then be fractionalized. What's an example of that? Well, if I'm building a bridge and the engineers tell me I need 100,000 zinc rods of a certain specification, I go and find them on the marketplace, get the, get the deal, negotiate it, buy, buy, buy the stuff for nine months future delivery. Then the engineers come back and say, oh no, you only actually need 80,000. Now, in the normal course of events, what the heck's the guy going to do with 20,000 units of something? In this case, they'll just place it on the marketplace and people who have need for that metal will be able to buy it smoothly through a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. So we're really trying to make the whole metals market much, much more efficient. Next slide, please. I'm trying to get through this at a, uh, at a massive rate. So um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. but the tokens actually, and, and as I mentioned, there'll be a registered security. So it'll give you a dividend stream from the platform. It'll give you a claim on physical metal, now fractionalized. But if you want to trade in your coin, as you used to be able to do uh, in the US, anyone here old enough to remember when you could walk into a bank, put down 35 crisp clean $1 notes and get an ounce of gold? I'm not looking at anyone in particular because I don't want to be rude, but that's what you used to do when we were on a gold standard when the US was on a gold standard. You'll be able to do that with metallic coin. In other words, it's actually real money, gang. And it will be able to represent your contractual rights in all of these metals purchases. So when people say, why does this blockchain project need a token? Why do you need a coin? Just use Bitcoin, just use money. Well, the reason we need our own coin is because this is a complex hybrid asset. And I'm not going to do my conference presentation about this being a new asset class, but when cryptocurrency creates new asset classes, it will create not billions, but trillions in value. I'm not saying we're going to capture all of that, but tokenized hybrid asset-backed tokens, we believe, are the way of the future, especially as registered securities with all the protection that enables. Can we have the next slide, please, guys? We're moving through this. Um, again, I won't belabor the process, but uh, you'll be able to invest in metals if they're pre-production at a significant discount. If they're already produced, you'll find the best price. You'll be able to tokenize it, trade it, hold it. So it can be an investment. It can be for delivery. It can be purely a derivative product. It's up to the trader, the investor, or the end user. Next slide, please. Um, there's a couple of slides coming up that are much more detailed. Because everyone's thirsty, let's just, um, let's just run through this and I'm happy to talk to people I'm going to be around. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, please, guys, if we can. Um, much more detail, too much detail. Get that out of the presentation. Next slide, please. All right. Um, it's, going to, it's going to be um, fully mobile enabled and fully, um, fully browser enabled, of course. And uh, our, we're really very focused on the UX. So this sounds complex, but we're going to make the processes as simple and user-friendly as possible. Next slide, please. Uh, we're a real business. I know e gassed in the cryptocurrency space, but I'm a little bit old-fashioned. I actually want to build a business that has really strong revenues that are going to significantly outpace the costs. OK, and so you can see some of the revenue streams that are there. There are others coming in. We'll have our own market making capabilities, arbitrage engines, and, and all the good stuff that an exchange can generate revenue from. But these are the basic uh, income measures. Next slide, please. I'm, I'm trying to go through these really quickly. But the idea is that we, um, you know, we go out in 2019 and start to build just a very small amount of market share and grow by a very simple value proposition. Forget about blockchain. Forget about all the complex technology. Our case to metals traders, miners, and users is we will save you a heap of money and make your life much simpler. Right? So if we can cut costs, so an average metal trader trades between 100 million and 500 million a month in metals. If we can save them half to 1% and potentially give them an extra 1% of margin on top of that, that's pretty material, and we think that is a, a business case for people. The fact that it's on distributed technology, et cetera, et cetera, doesn't really matter so much to these people. They want to see that we can do it. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, 
So we, we have an interesting capital trajectory as well. We're raising, uh, I've got, you know in Australia that means the same as that in America. But anyway, just <laughs> moving along. So thanks very much, Rob. I love you too, mate. Um, yeah, it's always, it's always good when the host tells you to go in. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's do that. All right, that's ACDC, another great Australian export. All right, so we're raising a, a pre-IPO round of one and a half to two million. That will get us a full release of our product. It will get us listed in Canada, either on the CSE or the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture Board, and it will get a very good head start on our regulatory work. The IPO will then get us really through the full uh, prospectus filing, all the other US regulatory hurdles. We will either partner with an ATS and broker-dealer platform or deliver our own. Um, actually, we've, we've had some quite advanced discussions with a really good ATS platform and broker-dealer uh, provider who we may well partner with, uh, who are also interested in putting some money into the pre-round. So we probably won't build our own initially, but we will build up that expertise. It is a hole in our team at the moment. Uh, and then once we register the token, the idea is to go onto Wall Street and do an institutional round selling security tokens, not here's a white paper and a website, give us 100 million bucks, we might build something. I think that's what I like to call the good old days of crypto, or actually the bad old days. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. The 100 million we're looking for will be for liquidity on the platform, so that we can launch a fully functioning ecosystem and trading platform that has some liquidity. And then once it starts proving out, we can invite other liquidity providers, market makers, arbitrage traders, and all the things that generate nice heaps of volume on an exchange to plug into an open platform. But um, that's what we want to do with the money. And we want to very quickly scale this to be a global business. So the plan, once we register and start in the US, is to move very quickly to where the market is, which is Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Zurich, and, uh, and probably Australia as well. Let's move on to the next slide, because I don't want Rod, uh, Rob to tell me to get stuffed again. <laughs> and um, Right, next slide, please. Okay, I've mentioned the SEC, let's move on. Um, next slide, please. Um, I won't go through all the team in detail. Suffice it to say, we have an advisory team that are deep crypto, deep capital markets, and deep trading experience, and also um, mining due diligence people. So we have an external partner that will actually do DD on the projects before they can list to raise capital on our platform. And we have a, an experienced team of business builders and commercial operators, happy to talk to it further. And um, so that, that's really all I had to say. Thank you so much for your attention at the end of the night. Thank you for laughing at my very lame dad jokes. And uh, thanks again to Goldfinger and Rob for, uh, for having us here tonight.